Hello there guys, and welcome to this episode of Go Inkscape. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to design a very cool looking modern business card. Now to get started, we need to open up our main panels. The ones we'll be using will be an object, fill and stroke, and we'll also need object, align and distribute. We'll be cycling through these very often in this tutorial. So to get started, we need to set up our document for a business card size. So go to File, Document Properties. Now for this, we'll be switching to inches. For the width, we're going to use 3.75. The standard business card width is 3.5. We'll be adding 0.25 inches for bleed purposes. And we'll do the same for the height. Now, if you need it in a different dimension, you can always select down this drop down and you can select millimeters or centimeters or anything you'd like. So once we're all set there, we can go ahead and close out. So now let's zoom in a little bit. Now what we need to do is add some guides so we know where not to make a design. So go ahead and drag from your rulers over here and drag a couple of these guides. We'll need four of them. And since we'll be designing this business card with professional printing in mind, we're going to make sure that we use these guides as a safe zone. And then the rest will be simply a trim and a bleed zone. To adjust the dimensions of these, let's go ahead and double click. Now we'll have to switch to inches as well. For this top one, we want our Y axis to be at 2 inches. For this bottom one here, we'll double click again, we'll switch to inches. A Y will want 2 or 0.25. For this left one, we'll go ahead and double click as well, and we want the X to be 0.25 inches. And our final one on the right here will be 3.5 inches, and click OK. Great, now we're all set up. When we design the business card, we'll just make sure that nothing goes outside of these lines, and any backgrounds and background images need to go to the edge completely for the bleed. Now let's actually get started on the design for our business card. The first thing we're going to need to do is make sure our snapping is enabled. We'll go ahead and enable snapping, snap bounding boxes, snap bounding box corners, snap nodes, paths, or handles, and we'll snap cups, nodes, rectangle corners, etc. And then we'll also want to make sure that we snap to the page border. And also check that your snap guide's on. Usually that's default, but double check. So now we're all set. Let's grab our pen tool. I'm going to just click right here and you see it snaps and I want just a slight angle and it'll snap again and we'll double click. Now this will be the split in the middle of our business card. Let's go to align and distribute relative to page and let's go ahead and center on a vertical axis. We'll make sure it's perfect. So now that we're all set there, let's finish this up with the pen tool. Just click one of the existing snaps there. And we'll go ahead and just snap all the way around the business card and done. Let's go to fill and stroke, give this just some sort of fill, probably a dark gray for now. And let's remove that stroke. So now that we're all set there, I also want to add a blue accent to this. So let's just control D to duplicate, and now we have an extra shape. I'm going to turn snapping off since it seems to be snapping to my original shape. Now I want this color to be a bright blue for our accent. There we go. I'm also going to select this, and I'm going to hit my end key to bring it back. All right, that looks pretty good right there. Now, just to make sure I didn't move it at all, I'm going to go back to Align Distribute and make sure I center on the horizontal axis. There we go. Now, let's keep going. Now, what I want to do is add some text. Let's go to our text tool, and let's create our, our fellow named John Smith. I have a specific font in mind, I believe it's called the bold font, and there it is. Now this is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to go ahead and select that first part of his name, and I'm going to make that completely white. And I want his last name to be that blue color, so I'm going to go to our blue, blue outline here, and I'm going to copy this color. That way when I go back to my text object, I can go ahead, select his last name, and simply paste it right here. There we go. Now I'm going to shrink this down to size. All right, so far so good. Now he also needs a job title. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this. 
let's give them the job title of creative director. And let's see, let's make this one white as well. Maybe a light gray. There we go, I like that better. And we'll shrink this up. A neat trick we can do, since we want these the same width, we can go ahead and select this text object. We can go to Edit, Copy, and we can select this Jobs Position. We can select this uh, Locking so it keeps the Aspect Ratio. And we can go to Edit, we can Paste Size, and Paste Width. Perfect. Now we know it's, that it's exactly the same width as that. Now go ahead and select that, Shift-click the first one and head to align distribute so I can keep these centered. Go ahead and center that up. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit and crank that up. Now what I wanted to do is add just a little bit of an accent to uh, this color. I'm gonna go ahead and control D once again the shape. I'm gonna go to fill and stroke and then under fill I'm gonna go to pattern. You'll see it, it automatically gives me these stripes which I think are pretty cool. I'm gonna do the white ones though. And then we can go down to opacity and put the a very low number such as two. Now it's pretty subtle. You can leave it out if you want, but I'll just leave it in just to show that Inkscape can do something like this. I'm also going to use my end key and then page up to make sure that I have it the proper uh, Z index there. All right, that looks good. So now I think I might move his name just a little bit. Maybe we'll keep it centered. It doesn't have to be perfect though. In fact, I might even control G to group this so I don't mess that up again. So the icons that I have here are actually called type icons, and it's a free commercial use set of icons that I'll put a download link in the description below the video for you to get. Uh, they're very nice and generic. I have here a phone for the phone number, I have a letter for email, I have a location pin for the address, and a computer screen for the website. It's a great set of icons, there's a ton of them, and they're very modern and easy to use. So this is what we'll be using for this current business card design. Now I've already dragged these in here. They have a native SVG format, so it's perfect for Inkscape. Now what I want to do is have a circle to encase all of these. What I want to do is make sure that they all have a, uh, an actual size here. I'll make sure that they're probably 20, maybe 24. There we go. What I want to do is add a white stroke on the outside. Stroke style is two, and I actually think that'll be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's see if we can fit one of these icons in here. I'm gonna hit my home key to bring that forward. All right, let's give this one a white fill. And let's center it using a line and distribute. All right, there we go. I think these will do just fine. But what I will also wanna do is add a, a little space here to put the info on. Let's use this rectangle tool here, and I'm going to drag just a spot here. It's hard to see, so I'm going to make sure that looks good. I have a very odd thing going on there. Let's just reset that. I'm going to get rid of the stroke, and I want to color it blue. Now the idea that I had here was to, let's see, make it 22, since that'll be the stroke size subtracted by 24. I wanted to see if we could do something like this. I'm going to line these up. I'm going to place it behind using the end key. And do something like this. I think this might be a pretty good idea for uh, for design element for this business card. Let's see, maybe I can also do a rounded corner. Yeah, I really like that. I think we should go with this. Just to make sure I'm going to drag it just a little bit forward there. Excellent. Now we're probably going to have to adjust the sizes of these as I enter the information. This will be a great place to start so I could just start copying and pasting. So I'm going to do that four times. What I need to do is obviously change the icons in each one. Like I said, we'll position and resize these in a bit. Let me go ahead and delete these phones. And let me just get these a little bit in place here. Should probably make sure I have these in the right order. Let's see. I want the location last. There we go. The little computer can stay right there. So I'm going to select all of these holding control or holding shift and clicking. And then I'm going to go to fill and make them all white. 
Now let's go ahead and do the same thing we did before with align and distribute. And let's just keep aligning these to their circles. Now for the actual information on the business card, I had a different font in mine. I'm gonna grab my text tool and let's just type something out real quick. All right, this will be John Smith's phone number. Let's try to size this down. There we go. And the font I had in mind was called Roboto. Go ahead and select that. Yeah, this is a good font. It's very trendy and it'll fit well with this, I think. Before I keep entering the information though, I think I'm gonna have to at least group these because it's about to get very crowded in here and I don't wanna keep missing my selections and all that. I go ahead and just select them and control G to group them. All right, so first, let's see if we can position these evenly, uh, vertically first. So to do this, I'm gonna go to Align and Distribute and I have them all selected. I'm just gonna hit this one here and that should bring them all flat that way. And as far as distribution, we can go ahead and hit something like this. All right, that actually looks pretty good. Let's see if I could select these, make sure we're all good here. All right, yeah, let's do this. So I'm gonna treat selection as a group. I'm gonna do relative to page. We'll center it that way. And if I need any more room, I guess I can just uh, adjust these later. I'm gonna uncheck that just in case. So let's just continue entering in some information. I also want to give the text a white fill. That's pretty good. And I'm going to just be aligning these as we go, horizontally at least. All right. And I'll just control D to duplicate and I'll just keep adding his info. Let's do j.smith at fake.net. That sounds good. We'll also need a fake website. There we go, very creative, fakewebsite.net. And we'll also need an address. Let's do one, two, three, four. Let's see, where does John live? He lives on Graphic Lane in Fake 10, New York. There we go. So it looks like this address one will be a two liner. We'll have to adjust that later. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did before with the align and distribute. I'm gonna go ahead and align it to the left to make sure we're all flat out there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and align all of these to their holding. Oh yeah, this one's gonna be different for sure. And that's definitely not gonna fit. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start entering some of these groups just by double clicking. And I can grab the rectangle tool and select these, hold control and drag them over. Now what I really wanted was just a, a uniform width that I could use. It looks like 112 should be pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do this for all of them. And hit enter, here we go. Let's go ahead and give this one. Excellent. Finally. Perfect. All right, now the only one we really need to tinker around with will be this address one. I'm gonna double click to go in the group again. Let's grab the rectangle. And I wonder if I just drag this down. This actually looks very good. Aside from it being just a tad too long, I'm wondering if I should, looks like I'll have to adjust all of the text size, just a little bit smaller. Maybe I could just do this one. Yeah, let's just do that. I think that'd be better. Let's go ahead and align this. There we go. And that way we're still set. It's just a little bit off, but not too bad. I think overall it looks pretty good. But dragging this one down, uh, now it's not centered. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab all these, treat selection as group, relative to page, and align once more. All right. All right, there we go. I think we could uh, stick it with this. Just to make sure, I'm gonna put a, uh, I'm gonna put a white rectangle behind all of this, just so we can uh, just so we can make sure that there's no transparencies. Let's get rid of that. Go to fill and stroke. Get rid of the white external. Perfect. All right, and I'm just gonna hit end to send this back. 
And there we go. I'm wondering if we could thicken up this text a little bit to make it a little easier to read. I'm noticing from zooming out, that's a little tight. Let's go ahead and add just a white stroke on it. Definitely don't need that much. There we go. That's a lot better. Excellent. Okay, I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and export this and see what we get. Remember, we don't just make videos. You can head over to GoInkscape.com for daily tips and tutorials exclusively for Inkscape. Thanks for watching.